First, giving all honor and praises to the master of the universe, I come before you in this very critical hour for just a brief moment. I want to greet all of those who walk the line of divine. Greetings and thanks to the God of our fathers for Abraham, Abraham, Ibrahim, for Isaac, Jacob, and all of those who have walked the line of divine. I want to greet you in the greetings of peace for those in my community and those in my family that worship in, in Al-Islam. I greet you in Asinam Alaikum. For those that are in my community and family of Christendom, I greet you and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And for those of the Yehudim community, I want to come before you and greetings of the Hebrew community or Hebrew Israelites or Jews for the sake of this conversation, I greet you in Shalom Aleichem. I'm going to be brief on two to three critical points, but I also want you to understand I'm coming from a perspective and a thought. God is in control. Are you hearing him? Israel, Israel, Hamas, and the world. Let me make this very clear. These Arab nations must provide safe passage for these good, innocent Palestinians now and stop being afraid of the possibilities that Hamas will come into your region, be it Egypt, Egypt must now open up a safe haven huh, for these Palestinians, these innocent people to get out of harm's way because war is present and it's about to escalate. So let's not play these games that these folks are playing on the sacrifice of other human beings. We must open it up. And, and there's some, some reports um, about even in Lebanon, that they are, they are trying to destroy the bridges that leads from Israel into Lebanon to prevent individuals from coming into their country or their region also. So if that is the case, you must stop. Why did Hashem create humanity? We need to understand something here. Why did he create humanity? And the reason why I say Hashem, because of the simple fact, those of us who are Yehudims, we use Hashem, which only means the name. Doesn't mean the name, but it's a name that is used so that we do not curse the actual name of the master of the universe. So Hashem in this hour is in control. Huh? But when we say Hashem, Hashem is spelled identical in Hebrew as well as it is in Arabic. And it has the same exact meaning, meaning the name of the master of the universe, the main, the name of God. Huh? So Hashem, it literally means the breaker, the brave destroyer of evil. Mm, that's right. That's what the Hashem is. He is the comforter. So we say that because of the simple fact, like I just mentioned, that we don't want to curse his name by speaking his name out of context. Huh? But we want to understand that Hashem is in control. And are you hearing him, Israel, Hamas, and the world? I'm only going to breathe before you for a brief moment. 
I want that's why I'm looking at my quick notes because I don't want to forget what is so critical in this hour. We as human beings must come into that understanding and not fall into the trap that we see today. Hmm? Hashem is in control or you hearing him, Israel, Hamas, and the world. Listen carefully because most of you don't have a clue of what I'm about to say, but it's the truth and the facts. We in the Yehudim community or in the Jewish community or the Hebrew Israelite community worldwide, Huh? We just celebrated Rosh Hashanah, huh? the Judgment Day, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, Sukkot, the Feast of the Tabernacles, and receiving the Torah for 40 days leading up to Yom Kippur. We fast, we meditated, as Moshe, Moses, Musa did in the mountain on Mount Sinai. Before the master of the universe to pray and fast and sacrifice huh, for 40 days for a rebellious and stiff neck people. And so for those of us who understand the sacredness of that time, we sought what was called Tishava, Shava, to purge ourselves and seek his forgiveness, his atonement and his pardon for our sins over the past year. So we, there is something else that occurs during this time. And that, that, that's the period of the pardon and to be granted atonement for our shortcomings and our sins. The sacred writing teaches us that this, listen to me carefully. That the divine sets in motion during this time what each of us will face over the next year. He sets in motion the date, time, and second that we will receive certain blessings. He even set in time in, uh, uh, our death for those who are going to die from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. Because Rosh Hashanah is the judgment. Hmm. Huh? The Torah and the sacred writers teaches us this. So we look into the judgment. So all of these things and our tests, because you do understand whenever there's a blessing, there's a trial and a test set right next to the blessing. So the master of the universe set in motion trials and tests. And what we are going through Israel right now and the world is a test before the master of the universe. And he's in control, not Israel, huh? not Bibi Netanyahu, not Hamas, not Iran, not the U.S. government, not Joe Biden, not Russia, China. None of them are in control. The master of the universe is in control. And everything that we are experiencing is by his will and his commandments, by his command. By his order, he controls life and death. No one knows the hour nor the minute but him. So for any of us to think that some superpower, it has more power than the creator of the heavens and the earth. No wonder you are in this foolish condition. So he is saying in this hour, what is he saying? All that we are witnessing occurred because of the most high ordain it to happen. He's in total control of everything right now. Israel must accept his sign to turn back unto his instructions, his ways, his thoughts. Master of the universe sees us as being rebellious once again. And so now he is sending a sign and a one, and he is sending the message to us of what we must do. And what is that? We are in that land for what? We are in that land to represent another degree of his wholeness, his holiness, huh? In living out the principles and the commandments and the instructions to a T, according to the Torah and the sacred writings. We're not in that land for politics. 
That's not why we are there. He didn't bless us to come out of the wilderness for 40 years. Huh? He blessed us because we accepted the Torah on Mount Sinai. We accepted his precepts. That's why it's not a religion. We don't belong, Yehudins don't belong to a religion or to be religious. What is that? But something that's been crafted by man in his wickedness because after Mount Sinai, after we accepted and after over 2 million to 3 million Yehudins accepted the Torah, these 80,000 different religions came into existence to do what? To oppose the will and the instructions of the master of the universe. So what am I saying here? It's not a coincidence that Hamas attacked huh? innocent people. Hamas came in and slaughtered innocent people on Shabbat. A holy and sacred Shabbat. They desecrated Shabbat. And so now the penalty is coming. And the master of the universe is not pleased with us. That he allowed this to happen. He allowed it to happen for a sacred time. And so what is I'm saying to you also about the babies who were killed? Oh, they're blessed now. See, we don't know. See, those of us who understand Teshiva and those of us who understand the Torah and its purity from a spiritual and a mental and a mathematical standpoint, the Torah is not a history book. That's why some people don't understand and don't really love the Bible or don't love scripture. They don't really believe in it because they're looking at it from a physical and taking it from a literal standpoint. And the book is spiritual, mental and mathematics. And so the master of the universe is speaking to us. As he spoke in Exodus, the 32nd chapter, in the ninth verse on this wise, and the, and the master of the universe, Yah said to Moshe, Musa, huh? He said to Moshe, Rabbeinu, huh? I have seen this people, and behold, they are a stiff necked people. And it goes on in Leviticus, the 16th chapter. And you need to read it to come to understand this. But it goes on and also says, and make atonement mm, to, the most, to the most holy place for the tent of the meeting and the altar and for the priests and all the people of the community. This is to be a lasting ordinance of you for you. A lasting audience, ordinance for you and make atonement for the most holy place, for the tent meeting and the altar, I repeat, and for the priests and all the people of the community. What is the master of the universe saying here? This is to be a lasting ordinance for you. Atonement is to be made once a year for all the sins of the Israelites. I didn't write this. This is written in scripture. So if you have not really had, you did not really participate Israel into Yom Kippur, your atonement was not pure. huh? You did not seek a judgment from, your, from Rosh Hashanah. Huh? Israel, I'm talking to you. So you... If you have disobeyed and you have not been keeping his Shabbat and you have not been keeping his commandments and his precepts and his instructions and you have partake of the wickedness and the evil actions and behaviors of this world system, the master of the universe is not pleased and he is showing us in this hour his displeasure. Hmm? Have Israel Sought to Shiva or Shiva. Huh? Have the voices of Israel kept the Torah, kept the commandments, kept the precepts. I don't hear anybody talking about the power of God in this hour. And so the master of the universe is not pleased. He is in control. 
And he's going to release a power on this earth that this earth and the people of the earth have never witnessed before. We celebrated, as I said, Rosh Hashanah, Judgment, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, Sukkot, and the receiving of the Torah. Hmm. Hashem, God is in control. Or you hear in him, Israel, Hamas, and the world. Refuting Mia Khalifa's misinformation on history. Israel has only been a state since 1948. Palestine is thousands of years old. I remember this guy. Jesus Christ on a motorbike. <laughs> Sorry, Mia, you are wrong. Israel is 3,000 years old, 75 years young. And this is not coming from a Jew, but from a proud Muslim. The prophets of God whom I believe in were Israelites. A significant number of these prophets disseminated their teachings in the land of Canaan. A land which Joshua bin Nun later renamed Israel. And then King David proclaimed Jerusalem as the nation's capital. Yes, Mia, it wasn't Donald J. Trump. It was King David. Even Jesus of Nazareth, Mia, called the land Israel in the Gospel of Matthew. The Roman Emperor Hadrian expelled Jews from Israel, erasing the name Judea. He supplanted it with the Roman Latin term Syria Palestina, which evolved into Palestine. Similarly, the city of Shechem was changed to Neapolis or Nablus, which means in Roman Latin, new city or new place. The Jewish people, dear me, are not foreign colonialists in the land of Israel. I wish you'd inform your audience that Israelis and Palestinians ought to coexist peacefully and that peace is the only way, not marring history or disseminating falsehoods. Please share this video as it may reach me and others so that they know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Now, for those of you that say you believe in the Bible, but really don't, you really don't believe it, because you look at it, oh, that's of old. Oh, the, hey, oh that's of old. Oh, that ain't had nothing to do with today. Oh, that's yesteryear. Oh, that's this, that, and the other. Oh, really? Let me tell you something, partner. Ain't nothing new under the sun. That's scripture. Hmm? There is nothing new under the sun. And I say to you, listen to this. I didn't write this in this book. But listen to this for a minute. Read Amos, the first chapter, the sixth to the seventh verse. And it says on this why, so said Elohim, for three transgressions of Gaza. Hmm. Ye for four, I will not return them because they carried away captive a whole captivity to deliver to Edom. And I will send fire unto the wall of Gaza and it shall consume its places. That's in Amos, the prophet Amos. Huh? The prophet Amos, the first chapter, the sixth to the seventh verse. This is the prophecy of the prophet. I didn't write these words and I truly don't cherry pick what fits my narrative. I don't follow religion. I even written anywhere in the scriptures. I follow the Torah and the sacred writings based on the instructions that was given to the prophet Moshe, Moses Musa on Mount Sinai. You can keep your religion. I'm trusting in the most high and watching how he's moving in this hour. Listen to me very carefully. Mm. It is written that 99.9% .9 of this world is built upon a lie and deception. That two thirds, listen to this, the sacred writer says that two thirds of this world will not be a part of the world to come, the world of absolute, based upon the absolute truth. Huh? So let's see what's written and said by the prophet Zechariah in the 13th chapter and the ninth verse. Hmm? Reading on this why. Zechariah, the 13th chapter and the ninth verse. And I will bring... Mm. 
the third in fire. I will bring the third of the people in fire and I will refine them as one refined silver and I will test them mm, as one tests gold. Huh? He shall call my name and I will respond to him. I said, he is my people. And he shall say that Elohim is my God. Huh? That's the word. So that's only a third of us are considered his people. Only a third. And Muslims know in the Quran it says that if the if 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 God was to judge all the people on the earth, there will be no one left to judge. So are you being a hypocrite today? Huh? It says, bow down with those that bow down. Pray with those that pray. And I'm calling on the true believers to pray for the innocent, to pray for peace, to pray for love. And to pray that the human family return back to the instructions given to Moshe, Musa, Moses. Hmm? That is our only way for salvation and deliverance out of this foolishness. Huh? Let me make this very clear. These Arab nations must provide safe passage for these good, innocent Palestinians, good, innocent people now, and stop being afraid of the possibilities that Hamas will come into Egypt and all these other sanctuaries in the Arab world or in the Muslim world, because you too don't want ma ma Hamas in your countries. Oh no, you want Palestinians, but you don't want Hamas in your countries. If the truth be told, you don't want the Palestinians from Gaza in none of your well-established countries like Dubai, Abu Dhabi, the UAE, Oman, Kuwait, and etc. But you don't want to tell nobody that. You want to say that you support them and they should not be oppressed. huh? But you don't want to let them come into your country. Because otherwise you will be sending ships and other things to airlift them out of there and make safe sanctuaries for them across the border. It's to become weaker. I say it's both. Macron, the president of France, recently said the Islamic world is in a crisis. In my opinion, yeah, we do have problems. We do have Boko Haram, we have Al-Qaeda, we have Taliban. We have problems, but the broader picture, Islam is very successful, it's growing very fast. And we're doing really well. Dubai is not in a crisis. Abu Dhabi, the UAE, Bahrain, Oman, Kuwait, there's no crisis there. The Muslim countries are doing good there. Only some places there's a problem. I say, no, you are in a crisis. You went to the Muslim countries and you imported the garbage that the Muslim countries wanted to put in prison or isolate away from society. You went and you imported them. Why? For cheap labor. But these Islamist extremists, they don't want to work. They want free welfare. They want to marry French women, blonde hair, blue eyes. They don't have time to work. So look at Poland. They don't complain from Islamic extremism, not a single terrorist attack in Poland. The question is, Tina, did the extremists become stronger or the West become weaker? I say it's both. Macron. To part of the question on the issues of refugees coming to Jordan, and I think I can quite strongly speak on behalf not only of um, 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 uh, Jordan as a nation, but of uh, our friends in Egypt, that is a red line. Uh, because I think that is the plan by certain of the usual suspects to try and create de facto issues on the ground. No refugees in Jordan, no refugees in Egypt. God is in control. Or you hearing him, Israel, Hamas, and the world. I must say this as I conclude. I am very, I'm a lover of humanity, of good Humanity. I must express that. Hmm? 
I look for the good in human beings. But I, and I sympathize for any suffering on the planet and praying for the innocent through these times. But I must say this, I'm hearing so much about the oppression of others, whereas none of these people came to our aid for black people, African Americans in America during our 400 years of inhumane treatment. So don't talk to me about oppression. We had Willie Lynch, Jim Crow, the cotton fields, lynching, segregation, so don't talk to me about that as if you saying something to me as a black man in America that I'm not aware of. Excuse my passion, but I got to make this very clear. Because where were you when we were suffering with all your wealth? Now they are here, people are here marching in the streets and talking all this protest in, 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 in the streets of America and other areas about oppression and things in that nature. But where have you been when we fighting for justice for Trayvon Martin? Where have you been for all going into Ferguson? Where have you been when we talk about voting rights legislation or we talk about economic empowerment or we talk about reparations? Where have you been? Or even <laughs> the lynchings. Where have you been? Better yet, where is BLM? Black Lives Matter and all these so-called black voices that are speaking now regarding the struggles for black Hebrews or black Jews living in Israel right now today in the Holy Land. Our youth serve in the Israeli army. Where have you been? When our people that live in Israel and have children that's been born there and raised there and they only know the Holy Land as their land, but now they are trying to deport them. But you quick to jump for everybody else, but you ain't quick to speak up for the pain and suffering for our community. What about our babies that's being killed every day? What about our misguided youth and young that's being slaughtered and got self-hatred that they're killing each other. Where is the marching? Why do they support? Why don't they support us? But you're not prepared to answer that question. Where's our political voices talking about our suffering? But you quit to talk about somebody else. We are only people that don't take care of our own business first. Now we got children in Demona, Israel. They don't know nothing else. They've been born there. Their parents left America and went back to the homeland, the holy land. But now they want to be deported because they want to fall under the law of return. And establish themselves. I've heard about the anybody can get it war going on between Israel and Palestine. What you may not be aware of is the black Hebrew Israelite religious community in Israel. That's right, fam. They got black folks out there, about 3,000 of them. And many of them, well, dozens of them, are at risk of being deported. Yeah. All of this happened when the group tried to formalize their identity in Israel. Yeah, they wanted to formalize their status. And the government said, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Get up out of here. 
Get up out of here with that. Back in 2021, Israel's interior minister sent letters urging members of the community to leave within 60 days, despite some of them having been born in the Jewish state. Some of those ordered out of Israel have lived in the country, forget this fam, more than 20 years. One black Hebrew Israelite said, I was born here, raised here, was educated here, and I don't know any other place in the world. Black Hebrew Israelites are groups of black Americans who believe that they are descendants of ancient Israelites of the Bible. The movement began in the late 19th century in the United States, however, later expanded in separate strands. Israel's black Hebrew Israelite community first came together in Chicago in the 1960s under the leadership of Ben Carter, a preacher who later became known as Ben Ami Ben Israel. His followers settled in Israel in the 1960s and 1990s, with many of them receiving citizenship and residency. However, some did not, along with other members of the community, and they are now being forced to leave. So what do y'all think about that, fam? Okay. But what about our Ethiopian brothers and sisters airlifted from Ethiopia into Israel and the, and, the, and the oppression that they are experiencing and have experiencing? But you BLM and all these other so-called black voices and politicians, you don't offer nothing for them. You don't raise no money for them. You don't send resources to them but you quit to march with other people. Yeah, they got a just cause, but what cause is more just than us? So it's just not us that you willing to just stand with. Unconditional. A few thousand Israeli demonstrators, many of Ethiopian descent, took to the streets of Tel Aviv on Wednesday to protest against police brutality following the death of an Israeli Ethiopian man. 24-year-old Yehuda Biada was shot and killed by an Israeli policeman on January 18. Israeli media said the man was wielding a knife and was mentally ill. Protesters blocked a highway and burned rubbish during the demonstration. Israeli police arrested 11 people over the protest and six police officers sustained minor injuries, a police spokesman said in a statement. Students in Tel Aviv are on standby to respond to any types of incidents that could take place, disturbances or on any other scale. And that is after there is a demonstration taking place by the Ethiopian community. Prior to the demonstration, police units met with the leaders of the communities in order to make sure that the situation will be calm and quiet. Our units will respond to any incidents if they'll take place whatsoever. Israel is home to around 140,000 people with Ethiopian heritage. Oh, Hashem isn't pleased with these actions either. We must pray, huh? protect the innocent throughout all of humanity, and we must seek peace and love among each other. Remember, Hashem, God is in control. Or you hearing him, Israel, Hamas, and the world. I leave you now as I came before you. I greet you in the only greetings that we know. In Hebrew, we say Shalom Aleichem. In Arabic, you say Assalamu Aleichem. In Christendom, they say praise the Lord, hallelujah, grace and peace. And for all of others, I greet you in peace. And may the master of the universe protect us. And may we return Israel to his orders and his commandments and his precepts. Because he is not pleased with us either. Shalom Aleikum.